Hello everyone, this is Mr. Van Hemert, and I'm going to be talking to you about the Great Canadian Shield. Feel free to pause this video at any time while you're watching. The Canadian Shield is the largest geographic region in Canada. It covers almost half of Canada, and it's shaped like a big horseshoe. And here's what it looks like. It covers quite a bit of Canada, almost all of Quebec, uh, much of Ontario, uh, half of Manitoba, this little corner of Saskatchewan here, a piece of Alberta, much of the Northwest Territories, and some of Nunavut, except we're going to consider this a part of the Arctic North. There's also this little section here. This is called the Hudson Bay Lowlands. And we're going to include that as part of the Canadian Shield, even though it can be considered a different region because it's a lowland, whereas the Canadian Shield is a high region. This is what much of the land looks like in the Canadian Shield. It's very rocky. Uh, it's a large rocky surface with forests, rivers, lakes, hills, and marshes. And there's little fertile land for agriculture. That means not much grows there. A lot of pine trees grow there, though, so there is quite a bit of forestry. Much of the land in the east and southern parts of the region is high above sea level. The northern half of the shield has lots of tundra. That's frozen land, which is soil mixed with water, which stays frozen most of the year. Water covers a quarter of the Great Canadian Shield's surface. If you looked at a map, you'd see thousands of lakes. And much of this water is in low-lying regions that becomes marshes and bogs. This is called a muskeg. The water has nowhere to drain. A muskeg is very moist and cannot hold much weight, so the railway could not be built through this area. It was built instead right along the Great Lakes. Major cities in the Canadian region. Churchill, Manitoba is right by Hudson Bay, and it's the polar bear capital of Canada. Sudbury, this is a place where they have this giant nickel, because they mine a lot of nickel. It's a mining city. Ottawa is also in the Canadian Shield, just in the very bottom. It's the capital of Canada. Cities like Thunder Bay which you could also consider to be part of the Great Lakes region because it's right on Lake Superior. Aqualiet, the capital of Nunavut, and Yellowknife. Thunder Bay is located right north of the Great Lakes. And there are many provincial parks around that area. And also other areas of the Canadian Shield, such as Algonquin and Polar Bear. Sudbury, like we said, is the nickel capital of Canada. Yellowknife. Here's some pictures. Aqualiet is the capital of Nunavut, like we said. Uh, people go north to see the northern lights, and these areas are also known for their soapstone carvings by the Inuit. And of course, you'll see these sculptures there. Of Do you see, you can see the soapstone carvings. Plus, you can see this this little nuktuk. Churchill, Manitoba, like we said, was a polar bear capital of the world. Many tourists go there just to see the polar bears. And here they use tundra buggies with big wheels because it doesn't damage the tundra. And many people again come to see the northern lights. Lakes. Hudson and James Bay form an important bridge to the natural resources. The northern Great Lakes are part of the Canadian Shield. And there are thousands and thousands of lakes. 
There's Great Bear Lake, Great Slave Lake, Lake Athabasca, Lake Winnipeg, all shared with the Canadian Shield and the Interior Plains. They're on the border. The climate. Well, it's far up north, so it's very cold in the winter. Summers are very short, but they're warm. Hudson Bay is frozen from December until late June, even in the summer. The surface water is close to freezing. You can't go swimming there. On Great Slave Lake, the ice can be a meter thick. That's heavy enough for 20,000 kilograms. In the south, the winters are still cold. Uh, there's lots of wind and heavy snowstorms. Summers are often hot and dry. Oops. Uh, the region is known for having many forest fires. These fires are actually good for the forest because it prunes the forest. It releases nutrients in the soil and allows more sunlight to come into this area. August is the rainiest month in this region. So maybe you don't want to go camping there after all. Wildlife. There are many different mammals such as caribou, deer, moose, bear, and wolf. There are birds of prey such as the owl, the eagle, the vulture, and also many songbirds. And with so many lakes, there are also many different fish. It's a sportsman's paradise. Mining is one of the biggest resources in the Canadian Shield. Many mining towns throughout northern Quebec and Ontario. Ontario. Minerals include gold, silver, nickel, and copper. Sudbury, like we said, is one of the largest nickel producers. It's also a leading producer of copper. Diamonds have been found in the Northwest Territories. Tourism is another resource, more of a human resource, but also a natural resource. You can go there and do things like fishing, skiing, biking, hunting, camping, and canoeing. They also produce a lot of hydroelectric power because of all the rivers that they have running through the Canadian Shield much like we do here in BC. And Quebec is Canada's largest producer of hydroelectricity. And much of this electricity is sold to the United States. There are many forests in the south. There's a lot of forestry. But there's not very many huge trees because the soil is poor. And that is the end of our presentation. I hope you learned something about the Great Canadian Shield.